Just before we start, a word from the sponsor of this video. With the new VoIP Scan app, you no longer need to pay for calls. You will immediately receive a welcome bonus to your account. If the balance is over, you'll be offered to watch the video and you'll be credited for viewing with bonus minutes. Call anywhere in the world, on landlines, phones of any carriers at a fixed price. Calls and chats inside the application are free as in any other messenger app. You will find the link to this application down below the video. This is the Doji S90, one of the kind rugged phone that can be customized by attaching different modules to it. In fact, this is the first modular rugged phone in the world. The device also has great specifications and it costs about 330 bucks. Let's take a look. The phone ships with all the usual stuff and some extras include USB ODG cable and a headphone jack adapter. The key selling point of this device, you can attach different modules to it. So far, you can choose from the game mod, walkie-talkie, battery, and night vision mods. I have the battery case and night vision mod that are sold separately, but some retailers sell them bundled up with the phones. I will leave all the links down below the video. The night vision mod easily attaches to the phone using the Pogo pins. The module is made of high-quality plastic and it has quite a big Sony sensor. Well, it's not a military-grade night vision device, but it lets you take bright pictures at night with wide-angle lens. It brightens up the scene up to 12 times, which is quite impressive. The image quality may not be really impressive, but you can still get usable pictures that are much brighter than using the main camera. All in all, some may find this device a bit gimmicky, but I think it's a nice idea to have a camera module that takes much brighter pictures at night and it gives you a much wider lens. Another module is actually a 5000 mAh power bank and I really like the idea of it. Obviously, it makes the phone ridiculously bulky and heavy, but you get a total of 10,000 mAh after all. I also found this battery mod to be well made and it attaches to the phone very easily. Tell me in the comment section down below what do you think about this modular system. Would you buy this device because of the modules or you think it's a gimmick? Now let's talk about the S90 itself. Once you pick the phone up, it's obvious this is a rugged phone. We have a metal alloy frame, a metal backplate and a rubberized shock resistant material that covers the phone's top, bottom and the corners. Overall, this phone is built like a tank. It's also IP68, IP69K and MIL810G certified, meaning that the phone will survive numerous drops, it's water and dust resistant and the device will work under the harshest conditions. Despite all the rugged properties, the phone is relatively thin considering it has a massive 5050 mAh battery that performs really well. I could get about 15 hours of screen on time while using the phone for the basic stuff, taking quite a lot of pictures and gaming for about 1 hour. The supplied fast charger fully charges the phone in just about 2 hours, which is a good result considering a massive battery. There is also a wireless charging feature. I found the display to be really good for a budget phone. It's really sharp and vibrant and sunlight legibility is pretty good. The screen is also covered with a Gorilla Glass 4. The phone also has a dual camera setup on the back that consists of 16 and 8 megapixel shooters. On the front you can find an 8 megapixel selfie camera. I found the fingerprint reader to be accurate and fast. However, I wish it was implemented a bit lower so it's easier to reach. There is also a face unlock feature that works well but is less reliable than the fingerprint scanner. Other key features of the phone include a highly customizable custom key, very nice and responsive buttons including a camera launch and shutter key, a hybrid dual SIM card tray and USB Type-C port that is covered with a flap. Unfortunately, there is no LED notification light and no headphone jack. Finally, the loudspeaker may not be the best out there, but it's quite good for a budget rugged phone. Here is a quick audio sample.
The phone ships with good specifications like Helio P60 CPU, 6GB of RAM, and 128 gigs of expandable storage. Gaming performance is actually pretty good. I was able to play most of the games on the high graphics settings without major issues. Even the PUBG runs fine on medium graphics, which is quite impressive considering the price of the phone. In other words, if you buy the Doji S90, you'll be able to enjoy quite a few 3D games. As for the UI, the Doji S90 ships with Android 8.1, but we have Doji skin built on top of it. There are quite a few settings and added features to play with, and overall, I found the phone to be really fast and responsive on a daily basis. In addition, there are quite a few gesture and motion controls, and you can customize the multifunctional button in a lot of different ways. One thing that I don't like, Doji removed the app tray for some reason. Other than that, the phone feels smooth and snappy. Just before we start talking about the camera, check out high resolution camera samples on my Facebook page if you're interested. The main camera can take really nice pictures in good lighting. Well, some of them may look a little bit cartoonish because of heavy processing, but overall, this is one of the better camera setups in a budget rugged phone. The portrait shots use mostly software to mimic DSLR bokeh effect, but some of the images may look okay on Instagram. However, low-light camera performance could be better, but that's expected at this price point. Selfies look really nice and detailed, which is not the case with all rugged phones. 1080p video quality is quite good, but I found that continuous autofocus can be jumpy at times, and the video is quite shaky. 720p selfie video looks quite good, however, sound recording quality could be much better. Connectivity-wise, the Doji S90 has been solid. Signal reception and call quality have been good and the GPS is accurate. It's worth mentioning that the phone supports full Netcom or all worldwide 4G bands, which is essential for traveling. The phone also has NFC and there is a gyroscope among other sensors. Overall, the Doji S90 is quite a unique phone due to its modular design. Even though some may find this feature gimmicky, I appreciate Doji's effort to stand out from the crowd. In fact, I like the idea of modularity that adds additional functionality to the phone. As for the device itself, I think it's a solid rugged phone because I found it to be well crafted, the display is really nice, the device has great specifications, the battery life is pretty good, and the overall performance has been solid. Last but not least, Doji has really improved cameras on the rugged phones and the S90 can take really nice pictures in good lighting. The main shortcomings would be the lack of the LED notification light and a headphone jack. I also found the continuous autofocus to be unreliable at times when recording the video. Despite these shortcomings, I think that the Doji S90 is a very good and truly innovative modular rugged phone, even though it's not the cheapest option out there. What do you think about the Doji S90 and its modular design? Drop me a comment down below. Also drop me a comment down below if you have any questions about this phone. Like the video if you liked it. Follow me on social media. And as always, it was Linus. Thank you for watching and see you soon.